I don't know much about these computer things, but it looks powered down. Looks to be some drawing of a little girl. It's a self-portrait. I can't see inside, but it looks like a Valentine's Day card. It's from my dad. Cute, but uh, I don't know the first thing about dollhouses. That's okay. Neither do I. None of my dolls fit in there anyway. That bear looks like it's been sat on more than played with. It's his fault if he doesn't get out of the way. It's a stuffed globe of the earth. Some kind of stuffed octopus. His name is Cute Thulu. It's a stuffed panda. She's Pandona the Giant. Her home planet is the Globe Ball, but she's too big to go back. So she stays here. She's left this shirt in the middle of the floor. I guess she won't be picking it up. Seems to be in good shape. She looks 10, maybe 11. Too damn young either way. Excuse me. Oh, hi. I'm practicing. I can see that. You're pretty good. Thanks. I'll only be a minute, then you can get back to it. Well, okay. My name's Joey. What's yours? Are you sure you should be here? Sure. I'm Kendra Haskins. Are you here all alone? No. Mom's here. Are you sure? I can't find her. I'm pretty sure. I'd know if she was gone. What about your dad? Is he around? No. He's late. Late? Late for what? Picking me up. On Fridays we go to the abacus, and then I live with him until Monday. But he's late. You said you go to the abacus. It's his work. Your dad takes you to work? Mm-hmm. He's the boss. Your dad's the boss, huh? He must be a very important man. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Can you tell me anything else about this abacus place? It's dad's work. TVs and computers and stuff. He lets me play with them when nobody's around. No, not this time. Not with her. Besides, it's not like that line ever works anyway. Kendra, I need you to tell me the last thing you remember. Why? Just humor me. Um, I was coming home from school and... I came here. That's it. Are you sure? Yes. I've been waiting for my dad. Did you know George Austin? You mean Mom's... friend? Yeah. He's okay. Mom likes him. But you don't. Dunno. Do you ever go to Grace Church? No, but Mom does. She does? She used to go a lot. Not anymore, though. I'm looking for Leah, your mother. Any idea where she could be? She should be here. I'd know if she wasn't. Tell me about yourself, Kendra. Dunno. So, where is this abacus? Near the subway. Right. Uh, do you know which subway? Um, no, sorry. That's all right, we'll figure it out. We always do. Hey, kiddo. I'd like you to come with me. Um, why? I'm gonna take you to your dad. Dad? Yeah, he couldn't make it, so I was asked to take you. What should I have for breakfast? Eh? Breakfast? What should I have for breakfast? I have no idea. Mmm, I have to practice. KK the Troll. Cute. It sounds to me like a scandal involving obnoxious internet commenters. <laughs> Trollgate. We're having congressional hearings about Trollgate. I've never thought of <laughs> I just, I just imagine like a bunch of sarcastic, bitchy internet assholes like being questioned in front of a special congressional panel. Like, is there any particular reason that you insulted this blogger's weight? <laughs> What's with the casual racism? <laughs> anyway. It's just a fridge, humming quietly. A 
painting of a vase of flowers. Why do people paint these things? Looks like a door to the basement. An old fuse box. The exit out to the hallway. Planks of wood left over from some sort of building project. Just an empty shelf. I can't touch it. Besides, there's nothing on it. A blown light bulb. Just a poster for some old junk car. A painting of some miserable old dame in a crinoline. A Christmas tree. Plastic, naturally. The only light in this room is coming from the street lamp outside that window. Some half-empty old plastic bottles. A kid's bike with a crumpled front wheel. What does Kendra like for breakfast? The thing is, you're still talking about her dead daughter, so it's coming across a little flip. Okay. What does your dead kid like for breakfast? <laughs> I mean... I know she's dead, you know she's dead. Yeah, so basically it's like, if you click on the corpse, that's your response. God, no. Even more disgusted. God, no. <laughs> A little less heightened. <laughs> 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 you have the option to vomit on a corpse. <laughs> Fuck no. <laughs> it's disgusting. Joey, you all right? Yeah, sure, whatever. We got a spook. Is it Leah Piero? No, it's her daughter, a little girl. I see. How old? Ten, maybe eleven. And she's okay? You mean, besides being dead? Yeah, she's playing the piano. Well. Yeah, well. Kendra said that her father took her to the Abacus, whatever that is. Had a feeling that wouldn't work. I'm gonna need to be more specific. So Kendra's dad is the boss of this place? This is just a bunch of junk. So Joey just said something that was fairly obvious, that Kendra's father ran the Abacus. One of the earlier builds of the game didn't have that line, uh, and a lot of the players were confused as to why they were investigating the Abacus, why they were going into the back room, why they were going to this brownstone. And that's because I was a little too subtle, and I didn't make it clear enough that Kendra's father and the manager of the Abacus were the same person. So I added this line here and I added it in a few other places just to kind of hammer it home and make sure that the point is made that these are the same people and this is why you're investigating this place. Hi. Like, I'm socially awkward. <laughs> um, I say hi way too intense. There's a Best Buy in Union Square that used to be a circuit city, so I used to buy all my electronic crap up there. And it's just got, uh, visually it's, it's really interesting. You go up this escalator and behind you there's this huge window overlooking Union Square. And uh, that's what I wanted for this location. I wanted to kind of reimagine that. Obviously I couldn't use Best Buy, so I just used the Wired Abacus instead, which I thought was this nicely ironic name for an electronic store. Uh, so I took some pictures of the view from the window, sent that to Ben, and he uh, created this view. So that's Union Square out that window. Again, a place that was about five blocks from where I used to live. Not a coincidence, trust me. He looks pretty confused. After all this time, I've given up trying to teach him about this kind of stuff. 
Union Square is usually filled with people at all hours. Not tonight, though. I don't think it's the kind that opens. With all the walking I do, I've gained a big appreciation for escalators. I think those are noise-canceling headphones. Tempting, but I don't need them. Flat-screen televisions, much more recent models than the one I've got. I don't need another television. I remember that old cartoon. It must be on DVD now or something. I'm not here to steal a television. There's a new model already? Figures. The tag on his shirt says Jordan. Some celebrity is being interviewed on a late night talk show. I have no idea who either of them are. I guess I've been a bit out of touch lately. I'm not here to steal a television. Looks like a controller for a game console. Not sure which one. I'm not much of a video game player. The sign says Emil Haskins, manager. Locked, of course. Hi there. Hi, can I help you? I'm surprised you're open with the weather this bad. Yeah, me too. But I only live two blocks away, and I could use the overtime. I'm looking for the manager. Emil Haskins, I think his name is. Mr. Haskins? He's not in. Taking time off for personal stuff, I think. I'm not sure when he'll be back. Is there a way I can get into the manager's office? Um, did he give you permission to go in there? No, but it's important that I get in there. Well, it doesn't matter to me if you have permission or not, but you need the code to get in. Code? Yeah, for the keypad next to the door. You wouldn't know what the code to the door is. No, nobody ever told it to me. Sorry. Thanks. Sure. I hope she's not thinking of buying any of this crap. The last thing she needs is another gizmo to stare at. Union Square. It hasn't changed much in the last 50 years or so. I'll leave through the door. Thank you very much. These only used to be in upscale shops back in my day. Now every two-bit operation has one. Those don't look terribly warm. Those things get bigger and flatter every year. Don't know what that is, but it's giving me a headache. Looks like the hunk of plastic that Red carries around. Young guy. Looks pretty bored. Can't say I blame him. Some vapid talk show. Uh, some kind of neck brace? I have no idea what that thing is. No idea what to do with that thing. The sign says Emil Haskins, manager. Bunch of ledgers stacked up against the wall. Interesting reading for some people, but not to me. A bunch of discarded papers. Someone wrote quarterly earnings on the cover. Positively riveting. Boxes of office junk. Don't know what's inside. The light barely pierces the gloom. Boxes of office junk. Don't know what's inside. It's a trash can. Pretty typical as these things go. A 
bunch of meetings and appointments are written down on this thing. Nothing really stands out, but the weekends are all labeled Kendra. It says, call Joe. I have no idea who that could be. Looks like an internal memo, some kind of technical stuff. It's all Greek to me. The tag has Leah Piero's address on it. Best guess, it's the key to her house. It's a phone, or some variation thereof. Some kind of animation is playing. I think Red calls this a screen saver. Whatever it is, I'm glad I don't have a stomach anymore. I don't know much about these moose things, but I've seen Red use them often enough. Huh. Whatever I did, it worked. What a surprise! Nothing happens! What a surprise! AC kick on again? I'm gonna freeze to death in here. I've never seen him so focused. I think he's taking this one personally. Joey, I'd like to talk to you. You rang? I love the look of these old brownstones. Really? These were old even in my day. I never understood the appeal. They're solid, I guess. Secure. People like that in a home. It's comforting. Comforting. Really? You feel this way too? Kind of. We see death all the time, Joey. Isn't it nice to see something that lasts? Eh, not really. All it does is remind me of how old I actually am. Joey, I'm already freezing. Do you have to make me depressed as well? You're the one who brought it up. Did you find anything useful on that computer in the manager's office? It's not like I could do much, but there was a photograph on the screen. It was a picture of Kendra, and someone who I assume is her father. It's frosted on the inside. I can't see through. It won't open from this side. It says Exeter House. It's welded to the side of the building. It leads to a small fire escape. The gate is locked. It's the front door, pretty solid. Locked, didn't expect anything else really. No response. No response. No fucking response. Uh. She's just standing around, piling up snow. Can we talk? What? The streets sure are quiet tonight. Not really surprising. I wouldn't be out either if I had the choice.
Emil seems to be on the fifth floor. Here he is, Emil Haskins. Hello? Hi, is this Emil? Yes, that's me. Who is this? My name is Rosangela Blackwell. Could I come in? I'd like to ask you some questions. You mean there's been progress? I'm... I'm not sure. I'm just trying to learn what happened. You're not with the police? No, they won't talk to me. I'm hoping you will. They won't talk to me either. Come on up. Rosangela Blackwell, was it? Yes, that's me. Come on in. I should have guessed you weren't with the police. I've spoken to enough cops lately. Is that all you know? Yeah, I'm afraid so. She's been missing for weeks, that's what happened. Big shot police detective, poof, gone. Then, our daughter. So yeah, something happened. And nobody seems to be able to find out what. I know that Kendra is dead, I'm sorry. What? No, we don't know that. Nobody knows that, not yet. Someone took her and she's missing, not dead. I... Of course. Uh, I'm sorry. The police might have given up on her, but I haven't. She's out there. Somewhere. I know it. George Austin was killed last night. What? George is dead? You didn't know? No. Of course not. You think the police tell the ex-husband anything? Ex-wife and daughter go missing. I'm suspect number one. How did it happen? He was shot. Shot? Jesus. I can't say I liked the guy. Leah dumped me for him after all, but Jesus. I always figured he was into something shady, but I thought it was more white collar. Insider trading or whatever. But someone shooting him? That's like mob stuff. Is that what's going on? Was he in the mob? I don't know. Jesus, Leah, some police detective you are hooking up with a mobster. I don't know if that's what happened. I hope not. If it did, How well did you know George Austin? Leah's the one who knew him. They've been friends for years. She talked about him sometimes. What did she say? Well, that's the thing. I got the impression he was kind of a loser. A loser? No career, living with his parents, that kind of thing. She felt bad for him. But then we get divorced and he turns up wearing designer suits and living in a penthouse. And I'm living in this shoebox. Are you familiar with Grace Church? Me? No. But Leah used to go there before we were married. She was really hung up on the place. What did you do when Leah disappeared? Got grilled by the cops for three days, even though there was no way I could have done it. I was at work, and I don't know if you've been to that store, but it's got cameras everywhere. But I just stood by and took the abuse, just on the off chance I would say something that could help them. Obviously, I didn't. How did you find out Kendra was missing? Her school called. The same day her mother didn't show up for work. They thought she was with me. I wish she was. Can you tell me anything about yourself? Is it relevant? Well, it could be. Hmm. Well, I'm a tech nerd. Worked for a bunch of startups back in the late 90s. Now I work at a chain store. Moved into this place about five years ago. Rented it from some Indian lady. Rent in this city is highway robbery, but there's no- You work at the Wired Abacus? Yeah, real glamorous, right? I wouldn't know. It's a job, is all I can say. I'm able to afford the rent on this shoebox apartment, at least. Well, I'll see you later, Emil. Yeah. Sure. See ya. Hey, wait. Why are you doing this? You said you weren't with the police, so why? There's much more at stake. Maybe. I, I don't care about the big picture. 
Can you help her or not? Yes. It's what I do. If I'm, I'm proud of anything, I'm really glad of the way uh, you learn about Emil and Leah purely through other people in the game. You hear mostly about Leah through Emil in this scene, and he doesn't paint a very nice picture of her, so you're probably going through the game right now thinking Leah is ultra super bitch, but you're talking to her ex-husband, so what else, you know, of course he's gonna talk like that. Um, but then you go through the second half of the game, you meet people who knew Leah and genuinely like her, and none of them particularly like Emil very much. So you get this, this nice uh, um, full picture of these two characters purely by talking to other people, and that's a, it's a very Lawrence Block way of, of doing character studies, and that's something that I always try to incorporate in most of the writing that I do. Poor guy. He's grieving, and he doesn't even know it yet. It never gets easier. I've never seen him so focused. I think he's taking this one personally. Hey, Joey? What is it? Poor Emil. Kendra is dead and he has no idea. Don't tell him. Not yet. He won't believe you and we might still need his help. You think Emil is involved with any of this? I don't think he killed his kid, if that's what you're asking. But he is pretty angry, distraught, and helpless. Who knows what a guy in that position will do? She tracked wet snow all the way up the stairs. Come here for a minute. What? Poor guy. He seems pretty bitter about things, but it's hard to blame him. Yeah. I've never been a family man, but I know fathers can get pretty touchy when it comes to their daughters. So you think Emil is involved somehow? Dunno. But who knows what a guy in his position would do. Maybe I should snoop around Emil's place, see what I can see. Let's get some slash fit going with a bunch of ghost blowing. <laughs> that would be good. That's actually, oh totally, if someone wrote a porn version of this, since the only thing Joey can do is blow on stuff, maybe his one power is being able to fillet the living. Maybe that's his only... I think that's actually great, and that should be incorporated in some fanfic. That's canon now. There's, there's no, you can't take it back. It's on tape. <laughs> Even if you delete it, we all know I said it. Joey sucks a mean dick. That's what I'm saying. Probably locked. <laughs> Sorry. Wow. I'm glad you aimed away from the microphone. Yeah, I did. Because even that was loud. Sorry. I was actually polite enough to fully turn my head. <laughs> and scene. So this hallway is fairly empty. This would probably be a good time for an art commentary, but he didn't make one for this, so I'm stepping in. Uh, originally, I wanted Emile's apartment and the hallway to be one background, and I coded it with one background in mind using my crappy placeholder art stuff. Uh, unfortunately, when Ben did the apartment, he forgot the hallway. He forgot that it was supposed to be that way. And he begged me, he said, look, you know, it will change the entire composition. I'll have to start all over. Can't we just make the hallway a separate room? So we did. So I had to recode everything to make it work. So, you know, thanks, buddy. <laughs>